everyone, and welcome to Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii, where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. I'm your host, Cheryl Crozier Garcia, and we invite you to join in the conversation. Please call us at 808 374 2014 with your questions and comments, or if you prefer, you may tweet us at ThinkTechHI. One of the simplest ways to see change in a community is to study its commercial districts. Here in Honolulu, the Jaguar dealership on Baratania Street is now a Goodwill store. The Liberty House on 4th Street Mall became a Macy's before morphing into a Walmart. Remember Schumann Carriage? Now it's Makani Kai Air, running commuter flights between Honolulu and Molokai and its former location on the corner of Piikoi and Baratania Streets is a Safeway. Most of us who grew up in Hawaii remember the small family-run stores where we spent our allowances on crack seed, shave ice, and shredded cuttlefish. Sadly, most of our keiki won't have those experiences. Long-time locally-owned businesses are closing, being replaced by large brick-and-mortar retailers as well as by e-commerce enterprises. One of the largest electronic retailers, Amazon, recently acquired Whole Foods. While that was probably a good strategic move for Amazon, how will this affect shoppers, workers, and those who compete with, if, with what is becoming a real behemoth of a business? Joining me today to share her insights on this issue is Carol Mon Lee, ThinkTech Hawaii's Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer. Welcome, Carol. Thank you, Cheryl. Nice to be here with you. And you know, before we get started on the real conversation, uh, we need to introduce our super special secret guest, Minky. Yes, this is Minky Mon Lee. Actually, Minky too. Minky too. Yeah, she's well, part Maltese. Oh, how wonderful. Mm -hmm. She's cute. Yes. Does she shop? Not yet. We haven't trained her to shop yet, but mm -hmm. she consumes. Good, <laughs> good. Um, you know, shopping and, and consuming are integral parts of virtually everyone's life. I, I can't think of a day, unless I'm sick in bed, where I'm not pulling out my wallet to pay for something, whether it's coffee or a bottle of water, lunch, paying the cable bill, whatever it is. Um, and there have been some real changes over time uh, in the way we approach acquiring the goods and services we need and then paying for them. What kinds of things have you experienced as a consumer and as a shopper that maybe are different today from the way they were, say, when you were um, younger? Younger. <laughs> oh, sure. And I'm a baby boomer, just to give you a, a mm -hmm. sense of my uh, where I fall in the spectrum. So, of course, um, I was shopping long before there were computers or uh, electronic devices of any kind. So, of course, I'm used to going to stores and actually touching or holding or checking the prices and then maybe using a calculator to figure out how much something costs um, and price comparing in real time, right? Mm -hmm. And then buying and then maybe exchanging by returning something directly to the store. Uh, and, uh, of course, all that's changed now. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I would say I haven't come along quickly like many of my younger friends and my children and my uh, uh, colleagues in terms of adjusting to the new way of buying. But uh, certainly I do buy more things now online and I look on to online. Uh, I just had a recent experience. I was uh, on, a, on a cruise ship and I downloaded a book on Amazon rather than buying the hard copy. And I read it online uh, through my iPad. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it because, of course, I was able to adjust the type, the font size. Right. And then after I finished my book, I picked up something else, uh -huh. uh, a hard copy of a book, uh -huh. another book. And I realized I can't expand the font. <laughs> and I <laughs> felt, boy, that makes a big difference in being able to, as I get older and wanting the font size to be bigger, mm -hmm. um, having that flexibility to do that with a book that you purchase online. Now, of course, I feel also that the downside is that I can't share the book that I purchased online through Amazon uh, with someone else without, right. uh, I don't know what you can do, if you can do it at all. I guess you can't. 
there may be a way, but I'm not sure what it is. Yeah. And and there are certainly copyright infringement issues if you were to just try to download it to someone else's device or something like right, that. Right, right. Uh, which is a lot different than maybe just, here, read this. Of course, loan yeah. someone a book. Mm -hmm. So I definitely ha uh, noticed that as a, a recent adjustment that I've made. And of course, buying clothes. A lot of my friends only buy their clothes online, but mm -hmm. I find it, I prefer to touch and feel, and then of course if it fits, I'll buy it, and if it doesn't fit, I don't have to worry about returning something. I, I, how do you feel about the, about the waste of packaging? I feel like there's so much packaging wastage, boxes and stuffing, and the size of the box is much bigger usually than the need for the, mm -hmm. the object, and I just feel I don't want to contribute to that kind of environmental. Excess. It does expand your carbon footprint mm -hmm. sometimes if you purchase uh, online and have things shipped to you. Unless you shop with a, with a retailer uh, that focuses specifically on uh, using recycled materials, etc. Uh, for example, just everything I have on today, I bought online. Uh, I have an app on my phone. <laughs> called Thread Up, which is a consignment shop slash thrift store type of operation. You can only buy uh, via the app. They're, they don't, online. They uh -huh. don't have a brick and mortar store. They have a warehouse. People send in their things and then they can either be taken on consignment where the person is paid after the garment is sold or they'll buy straight up and send you a check for whatever those things are. So everything came. And, but it was shipped, this was the interesting thing, via USPS, the post office, right. in one of those flat rate. Um, flat rate boxes. And the box was small. They were not, they're not trying to wrap it up all nice with foam peanuts and stuff um, and wasting a lot of, of, of stuff like that. Now, gasoline probably, uh, fuel costs associated with shipping, on the one hand may increase, but on the other hand, those planes are coming to Honolulu anyway. And True. if they're not filled with my thread up box, they're going to be filled with other mm -hmm. consumer uh, items that we need. So let me ask you, did it fit the first time it arrived? Are you sure yes. enough of the sizing that, mm -hmm. okay. So typically when you buy, do you ever return? I usually don't have to. Um, if, I'm, if I have certain brands that I know and I know what sizes I take in those brands, and so that's what I tend to focus on. If I see something I like that I'm not familiar with the brand or the sizing, I may head into a store and look for that brand on the rack and try it on and see which size is appropriate. And then because, go home and, and order it And then go home and order it. Right. Um, but, I, but what I do find is that uh, using ThreadUp, as well as using other kinds of... Um, shall we say, uh, secondary market type retailers, Plato's Closet, um, and uh, Savers, right. Goodwill, things like that. Um, I never buy new anymore. Right. Well, I, I had another experience um, involving uh, online shopping, which was I uh, had a, a, a young friend who was a tech person who helped me set up my um, second screen, and we realized I needed a new printer. Right. So he was at my house, we were setting it up, and uh, okay, I agreed, I definitely need to buy a new printer. So he pulls up on his phone, uh, Best Buy. Mm -hmm. And we look at several HP printers, and he find one that was in my price range and did what I needed it to do. So okay, let's go ahead and order it. Sure, so I gave him my credit card, we ordered it, $109, great. Mm -hmm. And I could pick it up at the store locally, so I didn't have to worry about being shipped and how long right. it would take. I could go pick it up the next day. Great. So I go to Best Buy to go pick it up, and the same printer there is $129. And I said, but um, I'm, I only paid $109. And they said, yeah, if you buy it online, it's cheaper, and you can still pick it up at the store. Or mm -hmm. they could have sent it to me. I was very happily surprised by that kind of a um, situation. And I also know that there are some retailers who will also match whatever the price is online, because typically prices online are cheaper, mm -hmm. right? Because sure. they don't have the brick and mortar to have to right. overhead. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they do have brick and mortar store, and you go into the store and you show them 
the online price, they will match it. Mm -hmm. That's a nice development. Yeah, it really is. If you can, if the merchant is willing right. to take that step. Now, a lot of times you should ask because they may not advertise that this exactly. is a policy that they have. Uh, but if you if you inquire about it, they'll say, "Oh, sure, we'll give you the discount." And and of course now the news is that a lot of these brick and mortar stores are closing. Right? We aren't hearing about how many, whatever it is, Walmart or Sears or lo big big chains are shutting down many stores. So how do you feel mm -hmm. about that in terms of you won't be able to go into those stores to actually try? Oh uh, yeah, that's true. But a lot of the a lot of the really big stores that have been closing, at least here in Hawaii for the last couple of years, Kmart, Sears, etc. I wasn't a big user of of those particular merchants. Um, although I have to say that if I ever needed an appliance, Sears was the only place I'd of go. Of course, to. right. Um, so I've got a house full of Kenmore because you could, uh, you knew the service was good, the product was fine. They'd install it for you. They deliver it. They take away the old. They stuff. take away the old one. Mm -hmm. You can buy a relatively inexpensive warranty. They'll come fix it if it breaks. Um, so, f for that, mm -hmm. Sears. Right. Everything else, not so much. Well, um, but it also requires if we're moving in that direction, where there will be fewer and fewer brick and mortar stores. Mm -hmm. Are there also equally a almost a a a hundred percent access to the internet for most people. I mean, you uh, know, what that's are you going to do? That's a that. net neutrality issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, if if we pay for, uh, say, cable television for a small extra fee, you can get internet. your internet connection. If you have a cell phone, you can purchase um, additional technology that will allow you to access the internet. But and, and you can walk into any public library. True. or any Starbucks or any, and provided you've got a computer or a, a phone with computer access or a tablet or something, you can do your shopping there. Yeah. Now, there are some security issues right. that come Compute with that. If you put a credit card, pay with a credit card. Yeah, and of yeah. course, the library, they do have computers, so you don't even have to have a computer. Right, right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, and it's funny you bring up the library because our library is going to go out of business. If we can download the books that we want, it, why walk into a library? Well, I used to sit on the Board of Education and used to be uh, involved in public libraries. And actually, they've, they've kind of pivoted in terms of what they do for the community. And mm -hmm. they've become much more of a community resource center, not just books, but of course, summer programs for, right. st for students, after school programs, adult uh, classes. Um, and of course, a place to buy and sell used books and That's magazines right. and sharing of all sorts of information. And then, of course, the big one is internet access, and particularly on the neighbor islands, right. it becomes a huge um, way for the community to be able to go to one place and be able to have access yeah, to both true. the computers and the internet. Hold that thought, because we will be talking more about this uh, right after we introduce our audience to some of the other awesome programming okay. on Think Tech Hawaii. So I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia. This is Working Together, and we will be back in one minute. We have this crazy thing going on today. I was just walking by, and all these DJs and producers are set up all around the city. I just walked by him and I said, what's happening, guys? They told me they were making music. There were a lot of people that claimed they had no musical talent and then sat down and kind of played some really nice sounds. So we do it.
welcome back to Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia here with Carol Mon Lee and Minky talking about how shopping and e-commerce change the way we shop and the way we think about retail workers. Um, and the issue of retail workers is something I think that doesn't get enough thought uh, because most of us, many of us, got our first paying jobs in some kind of retail related business. If it wasn't cashiering at the local store, it was maybe a fast food restaurant or something like that. And those are all retail type positions. Okay. Um, I still remember being taught in high school in the early Jurassic period how to count back change. Mm -hmm. You know, when I can't, you know, you figure you run the cash register, the total would come up, the person would give you their money, and you would have to count the change back to them. Today, not only can the average retail worker maybe not count back the change, but depending upon where you are, they don't even have to know the price. They can scan right. the items. Um, and in some places, it is even as simple as pressing the button with the picture of the item. No kidding. Fast food restaurants, yeah, mm -hmm. you want a cheeseburger? Right. Uh, the, the person behind the counter will press, press the, the picture of the cheeseburger and it will say cheeseburger. <laughs> uh, and th so, so in, a w in a way, the skill set that is required is so different. And I'd, I'm not sure, and since you mentioned that you had been affiliated with the DOE um, and the library system for a while, let's talk about some of those issues. How do we train our future generation coming up, not only how to uh, survive on some of these types of jobs as they're getting started in their working lives, but how do we train them to be good consumers of the vast variety of products and services that they can, that they have access to. So how do we do that? You know, I'm not sure because I'm not even a savvy consumer now. I don't consider uh -huh. myself a savvy consumer. I sure I leave money on the table all the time, right? I don't get the best price. My son can figure out what's cheaper than you know, and he can shop. I I just whatever is easiest sometimes for mm -hmm. me. So I don't know that I, I have the answer, except that it seems that the younger you are, the more savvy you are in terms, of course, of uh, online shopping, price comparing, knowing where to find the best deals, know, knowing some of these sites that I've never heard of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I find it interesting what people, because I teach mm -hmm. um, college mm -hmm. primarily, and mm -hmm. so most of my students now are late millennials and quickly becoming Generation Z right. uh, people. Mm -hmm. And what surprises me a lot is not only what they consider to be expensive or inexpensive, but what they would prefer to spend their money on. Very and, different. Yeah. Than, uh, yes. Um, I'll give you an example. When I was in college, and you'd get, I'd get my grant check or my scholarship check or whatever it was, the first things I bought were my textbooks and whatever school supplies I needed, my lab stuff, uh, those kinds of things. And even if they were expensive, I sucked it up uh, because I knew I needed those things for my education. Now, First of all, you're supposed to complain about the cost of textbooks. It, it's a rule. Really? Every, oh, of course. Okay. You're supposed to complain about textbooks. They are expensive. But a lot um, of them are online now. Yes, but even the online ones are sort of mm -hmm. expensive too. Mm -hmm. And you would be amazed at what students will do to kind of work around the issues of the e-books, the um, loose leaf ones that are cheaper, these kinds of things. No, I know it. I'm, I'm appalled when I hear that a student tries to get through a course without ever buying the textbook. Yeah, there you go. I mean, that's one. Yeah. Um, here's another one that, that I find interesting. Do not come in to me as a professor and tell me, gee, Dr. C, do you have an extra copy of the textbook? I can't afford to buy one. And then sit in my office with your Prada bag 
on your lap and tell me and your expensive cell that phone. you could that you yes. could pay six hundred dollars for a handbag but you can't afford right. a used textbook right. I just I cross my eyes yeah. and be right. like are you kidding me right yeah. now yeah. Are you t was that a gift <laughs> No, I bought it. Okay, well, maybe you should have bought a Priorities. cheap one at Ross for $35 right. and then went out and got your textbook. Well, do you um, know whether, for instance, maybe it's high school or even younger than that, junior high, as part of the curriculum of learning how to cope with life? You know, the old days where you learn to balance a checkbook and boil water and, uh, you know, do basic things. Are they including things like how to be a good consumer? There are life skills courses, mm -hmm. but I don't know how deeply they get into kind of the, the financial management issues and the consumer issues. Now, uh, you might get a class, say, in uh, family nutrition where they will tell you how to prepare a balanced meal and how to do, um, the, how to pick the best produce and stuff like that. But I don't think they will go as far as to say, you know, Oranges are good for you. They have a lot of vitamin C, but there's more vitamin C in a such and such, and they're cheaper. Mm -hmm. Or buy food uh, in its own season and mm -hmm. eat it in its own season. I, I don't know how far they go with those kinds of life skills um, that can have a tremendous fi financial impact on, on the way a family structures its resources. So do you think that's something that should be... Um focused on that there should be more education for Gen, Gen Z? Gen Z. I think that there is a need for a lot more education. The trouble is that time is a finite resource. Mm. Um, and I also think that I would love to see kids taking classes in music and art and literature, getting time for PE every single day, these kinds of things. Um, but if you've only got six and a half hours a day and less than 180 days in a school year to deliver content and then to assess how well a student masters that content, how, how do you, where do you cut? Right. You know, which is more important? Knowing that you need 8,000 uh, milligrams of vitamin C a day or memorizing Hamlet's soliloquy? So, of course, then parenting skills are play an important role in uh, educating your children uh, to be a good consumer. I hope, uh -huh. uh, and it should, but what do you do when the parents are working? Mm -hmm. You know, each one works two jobs. Right. They cross, you know, mom and dad cross each other mm -hmm. on their way to and from their various jobs. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, oldest kid is maybe putting supper on the table for the younger siblings number two child is taking care of the laundry or, or whatever it is, when does the parenting happen? Right. You know, right. a lot of times kids have to figure it out on their own because there's no mom or dad to ask right. because mom and dad are at work. So let me ask you a question. So where do you see the future? We talked about Amazon Prime or Amazon purchasing Whole Foods. I know that was one of the original themes of the show. Right. <laughs> so where do you see all this going? I mean, Amazon is going to be the super store food and everything else in between well I think I think the Whole Foods purchase of Amazon Amazon's purchase of Whole Foods was a smart move for a couple of reasons number one they had been trying to crack the food market via shipping home chef type meals etc and that didn't work it didn't work it doesn't work very well mm -hmm. because if you're not home when the mailman shows up right you know you're, you're kind of hosed food wise the other thing is is that Having Whole Foods as a brick, a brick and mortar store would allow Amazon shoppers to say, yeah, I'm going to buy all this stuff. I'll pick it up at customer service at, at the Whole Foods in Kalamal. So okay. Amazon is able then to use their supply chain to expand outreach to people who are not home to pick up the mail. Right. Uh, so, so it ends up being good for Amazon, smart move. Um, it will change the way we have to train people to work in the future. Um, you know, people say, well, all those cashier jobs are going away. That's true, but every box that gets shipped, somebody has to pack it and mail it, you know, and, and deliver it from point A to point B. 
So transportation industry type jobs are likely to increase as retail type customer service positions are decreasing. But there's still going to be room for people like me who want to go to the market and actually pick up a piece of fruit and not do shopping online. I hope so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm pretty sure there will be. I mean, particularly when we talk about food, the, the, the farm to table movement uh, is, is forcing not only supermarkets, but lots of other food retailers to examine the way they sell. Um, there's a farmer's market down here on 4th Street Mall every Tuesday. Right. Um, I cannot imagine a time when you will call the farmer's market and say, yo, can you send me five pounds of dragon fruit? Oh, and how are the peaches today? I I'm not sure that that will ever happen. Um, so there, there will always be opportunities, I think, for that human-to-human -human contact as far as, as a exchange of uh, consideration. Um, but, it, but how it happens and how often it happens will change. So do you think it's a good thing? So in five years, we, we have more uh, uh, online shopping, less brick and mortar. Do you think that's good for the economy, for our community, for our society? Well, I, that depends on the alternative uses for those brick and mortar locations. Um, I remember a conversation when Liberty House was closing and they didn't know if Macy's was coming, but maybe they were, et cetera. And, and um, so we were chatting in one of my classes about, okay, so what do we do with that space? And they said, well, what if we turned it into like a capsule hotel for folks that have housing insecurity? How many people could sleep, you know, with minimal changes to the infrastructure of that building um, and have a safe location to live, to get a good night's sleep, et cetera? So if the substitute uses for that space that is currently retail um, are good uses, then they can certainly improve the way we live as a community. I see. That, I mean, at least I think so. Yeah. And I'm not going to stop buying thread up because right. it's cheap. So then do you see Waikiki changing? Waikiki is changing, sadly. In, in my opinion, because to be honest, if you didn't see the signs written in Hawaiian, you could just as easily be in South Beach or uh, Puerto Vallarta or um, San Juan or any other place that has the kind of um, uh, climate. Mm -hmm. And none of that stuff. I mean, I haven't been to Waikiki I, since I got married. When was that? Fourteen years. You haven't been to Waikiki since not in fourteen four years. I haven't needed to. You don't have uh, visitors from out of town who go to Waikiki. I give them my car keys. Oh, I see. See ya. <laughs> uh, but no, I don't. <laughs> because there's really nothing in Waikiki that I can't get cheaper, faster, someplace else. And Waikiki Beach is beautiful until you see Kiana Point. Mm -hmm. or Kahana Bay or one of the other beaches where you're more likely to hear pigeon being spoken um, than what you would see in Waikiki. So um, I'll let the tourists have Waikiki. Okay. All right. And then uh, globally, do you see uh, online shopping? That's the way the future, even third world countries, how, how are they going to thrive? Yeah. Well, uh, look at the Alibaba example in China. Alibaba is actually bigger than Amazon, and they make money hand over fist in China by selling everything to everyone uh, in an environment, in a market, where there are places where there aren't even paved roads. Right, but everybody has a cell phone. But everybody has a cell phone. Right. And I'm seeing a sign that says we're closing in one minute. Yes. So um, what quick advice? would you give in one minute about, mm, oh, I don't know, what kind of gift would you buy for Minky? <laughs> well, Minky is low maintenance, and uh, as long as I give her food and shampoo and uh, a lot of hugging and loving, and she's a good dog. Aww. Yeah. And so. hugs and love are free. Yes, yes, and that's what everybody should do, right? Yes. Let, let's, um, let's challenge our audience today to do something like that. 
your, your homework assignment between now and the next time I see you is to go out and hug and love on somebody <laughs> that needs it. Yes. So we'll be back in two weeks uh, for another episode of Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Cheryl Crozier-Garcia. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you in two weeks.